Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, we're not going to talk about Angular, and we're not going to talk about React, and we're not going to talk about Vue either, but we are going to talk about the basics of Svelte. So let's get going. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is actually get Svelte installed. So we can come over to svelte.dev, and then if we scroll down to about the middle of the page, we have this line here. So we want to copy that. And then we can come into our terminal and paste it. And now I'm going to CD into my app. And I'm going to run npm install to install all the packages. Now I want to open this up in my code editor, VS Code, so I can do that with a shortcut, which is code and a dot. From here, I'll open up the integrated terminal. And to get this project running, I'm going to do npm run dev. And now we see we have a dev server running at localhost port 3000. And this is what we get, this nice little starter page from Svelte. So if we come back into VS Code now, we can look in the file explorer here, and we can see all the various directories and files that were created for our project. I want to direct your attention to this SRC folder. This is the folder that you're going to be working in primarily. Let's go ahead and let's open up app.svelte. This app.svelte file is powering what we're currently seeing here on the page. And when we're creating components in Svelte, we're going to use the .svelte extension. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this templated code so that we can start from scratch. And what I want to show you is how a .svelte file works. So we're going to have three main sections to a .svelte file. First, we're going to have some script tags in which we can write our JavaScript. And then after that, we can have whatever HTML markup we want. So let's say we had a div, and inside of that we had an h1 that just said hello. And once I save, you can see it automatically gets reloaded in the browser. So we have hot module reloading working here. And then after our HTML markup, we can also have some style tags. And we can write whatever CSS we want in here. So let's target that h1, for example, and just give it a color of red. So if you've worked with basic HTML before, all this should be very familiar to you script tags, the HTML markup, and the style tags. However, remember, we aren't working with .html files, we're working with .svelte files. And what that's going to do is give each of these three areas very special superpowers. And that's what we're going to dive into right now. So let's start off by looking at some of the superpowers we have within our JavaScript. So if we come here to the top within our script tags, let's declare a very simple variable. We'll call it count, and we'll set it equal to a value of zero. And notice that we're declaring this with the let keyword. Now here's the thing to know. If you're coming from React, let's say, normally you're going to set the state using something like set state. Well, here we are setting the state of this component simply by declaring a variable using the let keyword. And as we're going to see in a second, this is going to allow for reactivity. The next thing I want to do is come into my HTML area. And under the h1 tag, I'm just going to create a div. And in here, if I open up a pair of curly braces, and inside I put that count variable, now when I save, notice what happens. We get that count value of zero in the browser. So here what we have is interpolation. We've taken the count variable from our JavaScript and outputted it via our HTML. Now, of course, we want to actually see how this is reactive. So first of all, I'm just going to enlarge this a little bit so we can see this better. And then what I'm going to do in my HTML is I'm going to create a button. And here, let's say increment count. So let's see how we can basically add an event listener to this button. Because what we want to do is we want to click on the button and have this count be incremented by 1. So in Svelte, this is how we do it. We use what's called a directive. In this case, we're going to say on, followed by a colon. And then after that, we're going to put the name of whatever event type we're interested in. And here, we're going to listen for a click event. And then we're going to set that equal to some function, which we're going to put inside of these curly braces. So we haven't actually created the function yet in our JavaScript, but we'll do that in one second. Let's first give it a name. Let's call it handle click. And then let's come into our JavaScript, and let's actually write that function. So we can say function handle click. And now what do we want to do whenever the button's clicked? Well, we want to take our count and increment it by one each time. So let's save. 
and let's go check it out here in the browser. We'll click on the button and we can see that this count is being incremented. So if you look here in our JavaScript, you can see that basically we're just writing simple vanilla JavaScript, right? We're not using something like use state and set state and all that stuff. So it's very easy to see exactly what's going on here when the button gets clicked. Now I want to introduce you to another concept in Svelte, and this is called reactive declarations. So let's take a look at how it works. Let's say that in addition to outputting the normal count, which we have here, we also wanted to display under it that count plus one. So what we can do is let's say count plus one equals our count plus one. Oop, and I have to spell count correctly. There we go. Right, so now let's come into our HTML and underneath the regular count, let's also output count plus one. And I'll save. And now we can see we have zero and we have one. Now what would happen if I increment count? Would we see both of them updating? Well, let's give it a try. So I just saw the first one update, but I didn't see the second one. So what we need to do in Svelte, instead of saying let, we're going to use this special syntax, which is the dollar sign followed by a colon. And now this is reactive, All right? So this count plus one depends on the value or state of this count variable. So now if I go back and I increment count, you can see that they're both updating. Now, so far, everything that we're seeing here is being generated simply by this app.svelte component. But let's say that we also wanted to add a nav bar. Well, what we can do is we can make a new file and I'll call it nav.svelte. So now we have this new file to work with and this is gonna be used to create our nav bar component. So again, we can have our script, we can have some HTML, so let's make a nav and in here, let's give it three list items. Let's say the first one will be home, then about, and then we'll have contact. And then we can also create our style tags here at the bottom. And what I wanna point out is that all of these sections, they're all optional. So sometimes we might not actually wanna have a pair of style tags in our component, for example. So now that we have this nav bar component, how do we actually get it into the page? Well, what we're gonna do is we're going to import this component into app.svelte. So first let me divide the screen into two parts so we can have both of our files visible at the same time. And let's go ahead and import that nav component into app.svelte. So I'm gonna say import nav from, and then nav.svelte. And then to actually output that onto the page, we can use it as a component like this, right? And if we save, we see it here. So again, this is very much like React, right? Where we're bringing another component into a parent component. And a couple things to say about this. First of all, notice that in nav.svelte, we didn't explicitly export anything. So the entire component is the default export. And that's what we're pulling in here on line two. Also pay attention to the fact that these child components, they need to be capitalized like this in order to work as a child component, right? Regular HTML elements have the lowercase reserved for them. Oh, snap. Now I wanna show you something special about these style tags. So in app.svelte right now, we have an H1 element with the text of hello, and you can see that we've colored it red. What if we came into nav.svelte and we also created an H1 and we said nav. And now if we save, take a look and notice that nav is black while hello is red. So what that means is that the styles in each component are scoped to that component. So this h1 rule is isolated to just this app.svelte component. It's not affecting the h1 in the nav component. If we did want to style the h1, we could come into the nav style tags and then create a rule for the h1 and we could say color green, let's say. Of course, we can create global rules, but we're not going to get into that in this video right now. Now let's get into the idea of props. If you've worked with React before, this should be familiar to you. This is basically where we want to pass some data 
down from a parent component, let's say app.svelte, into a child component, like this nav, for example. So let's go ahead and do that. Here in nav.svelte, let's say that instead of hard coding the word nav here in this h1, we wanted to make this dynamic. So let's call it nav prop. Now, in order to create a prop, we come into our script tags, and this is how we're going to do it. We're going to say export let, and then the name of that prop. Here we're calling it nav prop. What this is going to do is it's going to make this nav prop variable available inside of the parent app.svelte component, and then we can pass it in as a prop to the child component. So I'll come into my nav component, and here I can say nav prop equals, and I can give it whatever value I want. So again, we could say nav, and you'll see it updates here. Or we could say nav bar, right, or whatever we want. And of course, we could assign this to something dynamic. So let's say we call this nav, and then up here, we could say let nav equals, let's say, navigation. And now you can see it updates navigation. So one of the ways that this is useful is that we can now reuse this nav component, and each time we do so, we can pass in some custom specific data for that particular component. So let's say that we just duplicated the nav here, and we created another variable called nav2, and then if we come up here and we say let nav2, and this time let's say nav bar, well let's save, and notice here in the browser, now we have component 1 that says navigation and component 2 that says navbar. So this is a way of making these child components more flexible. Now I also want to talk about how we can loop through arrays and output their values to the page. So to do this, let's clear up our screen a little bit. Let's get rid of nav.svelte and we'll also get rid of these child components for now and these variables. So let's say that we had an array of colors, for example, and we'll just make three for now, red, blue, and green, and then we wanted to output these colors to the page. So for that, in curly braces, we can say pound each, and then the name of the array, so in our case it's colors, and we would say as, and then we can give a name to each element in the array for each iteration. And then after that, we can create some kind of HTML element that we want to contain the element in the array that we're going to output to the page. So we've called it color. So let's put that in curly braces. And then after, we have to remember to close off our each block. And we do that with the slash and then the word each. So let's save. And here we go. We see red, blue, and green. So if you want to take your web development skills to the next level, check out the Code Creative Store for courses and free content. I'm going to leave a link for you in the description and the comment sections down below. Also, drop me a comment and let me know if you've tried Svelte yet, or if you're planning on giving it a try. See you next time.